Coming up on Inside Wofford Football, the Carriers travel to Sanford for their final road game of the regular season, continuing their quest to find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, NBSC, Dixie Tire, The Real Yellow Pages, and Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine. Dane Romero runs for 124 yards and scores a pair of touchdowns as Walford outgains Sanford on the ground, 346 to 56. Ben Widmeyer tosses a touchdown and the Terriers win the time of possession. Get this, 45 minutes to just 15 minutes for Sanford en route to a 28-7 win over Sanford. Hello and welcome to Inside Walford Football, everyone. Coach Ayers said the goal versus Sanford was to play a little keep away and keep the Bulldogs' offense off the field. And it worked even better than he could have imagined. On the Terriers' first possession, Stem DeVete capped off a 17-play, 93-yard drive with a 3-yard touchdown run to give Walford a 7-0 lead. On the Terriers' second possession, Dane Romero ran it in from 2 yards out to give Walford a 14-0 lead after 1. On the Terriers' third possession, they scored their third touchdown. And once again, Romero ran it in from 2 yards out to give Walford a 21-zip lead at the break. On the Terriers' third play of the second half, they scored their fourth touchdown as Ben Widmeyer hooked up with a wide-open Justice Joslin for a 38-yard scoring strike as Walford rolled past Sanford for its eighth win of the season. Final score, 28-7. to When we come back on Inside Walford Football, we'll take a look at the first half highlights as the Terriers set the tone early with a long, time-consuming drive. Stay with us, everyone. Movie night, Friday dinner, big game. Order online at PapaJohns.com. It's the things that make you go. Mm, 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 yeah. The best way to order pizza online. View our entire menu. Order 24 hours a day, seven days a week, up to 21 days in advance, and get exclusive online only offers. Visit PapaJohns.com and order online now. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Welcome back to Inside Malford Football. The Terriers score three touchdowns before they ever give up a first down as the tone is set early on. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. Opening minute of the ball game, Johnson in motion right behind the formation. He'll get a swing pass from Tolliver, hemmed in, and he's going to be tackled right about the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Terriers go out of the wing bone on first down, counter give left, and that'll be a carry across the 10 by Dane Romero. Widmeyer under center. Now they're going to run the play. Hand off Romero. Now they fit the dive to Romero, and Widmeyer's going to run for the first down around right end after the 34. They go out of the wing bone with a receiver left. Widmeyer. Straight drop to throw, far side, that is caught. First down reception, Justice Joslin. They line up in the triple I. The up man is Romero, fake give to him. Rucker comes to the right corner, gets the pitch to the 40. Near sideline, 30 to the 25. Dragged down from behind at the Sanford 21 here at the near boundary. Now Rucker will come in motion, set up alongside Whitmeyer out of the gun on first down. Romero carrying left, now cuts back to his right at the 15 from the 10. Fake of the dive, Widmeyer, pitch far corner, Rucker gets a block out front from Strickland, he'll take it inside the five, down to the three. Romero, your fullback, in motion left, Rucker, Widmeyer with the end around toss, coming to the near side and walking into the end zone, Stev DeVete, that is it 
touchdown. Nobody saw that coming, and David is in for a score, his first of the year. That was a great time to call that play. 5-0-1 remaining first quarter here at Seabird Stadium. Wofford 7, Samford nothing. They run a 4-3 front play action. Widmeyer, plenty of time, throws to the far side, caught over there, out of the backfield by Romero. Far sideline 40, 35, all the way down to the 31, where he's chucked out of bounds. That's a big reception of 23 yards. Wild right, Joslin, one man to the left. Toss sweep, Rucker wants to come to the near side, turns the corner to the 25. He'll be bumped out of bounds in Inside the 20 at the 18, Fen Allen, tight end in motion left. Handoff, Romero cuts left behind the line, touchdown! 17th touchdown of the year for Dane Romero, who leads the SoCon in that category. This is reminiscent of the Elon game earlier this year where the tier offense was clicking on all cylinders. Ten seconds remaining in this first quarter here in Birmingham. Terriers 14, Bulldogs nothing. Samford in a 4-3 defensive front, double play action for Widmeyer, scrambles right, tosses it away to Romero, breaks a tackle at the 45 to the 50, first down inside the Samford 45, down to the 43 and a half yard line. First and 10 at the Bulldog 31, wing bone again, fake of the dive, Widmeyer pitches near corner, Rucker gets a kick out block near sideline 25-20, Rucker to the 15, shoved out of bounds at the Bulldog 13. Wing bone set, tight end to the right, Widmeyer fakes the dive, curls up behind the right side of the line, scampers to the 10, and he's down at the 5. Again, two tight ends, his wings to the left, again handoff, Romero left side, bulls his way in, touchdown Wofford. Dane Romero, 18 of them on the year, oh. and the Terriers are making this look easy right now. 8.54 to play first half, Terriers 21, Sanford nothing, two receivers to the right. Then Allen, the tight end to the left, handoff Romero, comes to the right side, breaks a hole open to the 20, 30, near sideline 40, Romero across the 45, dragged down at the 48, a 33-yard run for Dame. Third and 14 Terriers from the 44, Sanford going to bring four, Widmeyer scrambling right, he's going to throw to the near sideline, it is caught by Stev DeVete on fourth down. Widmeyer fakes the dive, pitch far corner, first down and more for Rucker to the 40, to the 35, out of bounds at the Bulldog 33. Out of the gun, Widmeyer with two backs, handoff Romero, cut back to his right after chopping left to the third to the 26, fourth down and he yards from the 24, pitch far corner, Rucker, first down run, turns the right side to the 20, takes it to the 19, they clock down to three, down to two, Terriers want a fake, Kavit rolling right, throwing and he overthrows Austin Palmer at the five yard line. And trips left a single man right, a single back. Tolliver back to throw, and he'll be set back at the 10 yard line. Mitch Clark has his seventh sack of the year, came off the edge, and nobody touched him. And Sanford will not snap the ball again at halftime here at Seabird Stadium in Birmingham. Your score the Wofford Terriers 21, and the Sanford Bulldogs nothing. Coming up, we'll take a look at a guy whose contributions on defense go much deeper than the statistics might show. Stay with us, everyone. Carrier fans, here's your chance to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming athletic event. Be the first caller to 597-4110. Leave your name and phone number in the message, and you could be a winner. Compliment of the South Carolina Education Lottery. At NBSC, we understand what it takes to nurture something, to take care of it, shape it, watch it grow, like your business investments or your family finances. Here, you have one banker with you every step of the way. Sue, how are you? Oh, I'm great. <laughs> you know, after working together all this time, can you believe it? Mm -hmm, I can. And with us, you can trust one thing. All banking is personal. NBSC. They pick up their games, pick up their teams, and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student-athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. By the end of last year, Ryan Young had already completed the requirements to earn his college degree. But he had another year of eligibility, so he added another major. And now he's adding to a defense in more ways 
than the numbers might indicate. Now let's take a closer look at the senior defensive end in our Terror in the Spotlight presented by Papa John's. Terrier's defensive end Ryan Young has just 62 career tackles and three and a half sacks in four years on the football team. But he does not measure his success based on statistics. The thing uh, that I kind of take pride in is when uh, is when James Mitchell and Seth Goldwire uh, make tackles. Uh, one of our big responsibilities as a defensive line is to keep the offensive line off of those two uh, and to let them be able to, to move around and make plays. Ryan's also in a very unique position. You see, he's already completed the requirements for his first major, but he still had another year of eligibility. So he decided to add a second major so that he could play football and set himself up for future success. During my junior year, uh, I figured out that I was going to have uh, enough hours um, uh, to, uh, to finish up with my business econ degree real early. Um, and I had already gotten well into uh, the requirements of a government degree. And so I simply decided right around that point, I said, well, heck, uh, while I'm at it, why, why not just declare a second one? Still, with all that time spent in the classroom, Ryan says he's not done. He wants to go to law school. Hopefully I can get, uh, you know, go to law school, hopefully at Wake Forest or some, uh, some other pretty good school. Uh, and from there, who knows? Um, I'd like to, uh, you know, the possibility is also there for coaching. I'd love to do that as well. Being a lawyer, being a football coach, two totally different ends of the spectrum. But he says ultimately his decision will be based on one thing. So do what you love. I think that's something, a mantra that's been spoken by a lot of people throughout my life and the thing that I've kind of heard. And so uh, I kind of think that uh, when, I, when it's all said and done, and hopefully in about two and a half, three years from now, when I have a decision to make, uh, then I'll see, you know, what do I love. And right now, he loves winning. And he's hoping to get a second chance to play in the postseason. As he also said, one of the reasons he came back is to try to get rid of the bad taste losing to Richmond in the second round of the playoffs left a year ago. I'm Terry Lance, uh, 1991 graduate, University of Louisville. I coach the safeties here and starting my ninth season. Coming up, we'll take a look at the second half highlights as the Terriers put it in cruise control down the stretch by keeping the Bulldogs off the field. Stay with us, everyone. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. The Terriers start the second half the way they did the first half, with a touchdown, albeit much quicker. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. Rucker and Nocek are back deep to take the kickoff, and it's a little ground ball. They're going to look for the onside kick. The ball is free at the 44-yard line, and the Terriers have come out of there with it in motion near side Strickland with Meyer running the option near side now there's the seam to the 45 to the 40 he is sandwiched down at the 38 yard line two receivers right one left shotgun with Meyer play action throws it deep down the middle man wide open Joslin touchdown nobody was near justice Joslin you bring your safeties up so much in run support you're so afraid of, of a, a running back getting loose that play action works to perfection, and Justice Joslin was as wide open as Andy Strickland was last week against the Citadel. The 13-26 remaining, 
here in the third quarter, and the Terriers add to their lead. Wofford 28, Samford nothing. Samford putting six on the line of scrimmage. Fake of the dive, tossed by corner. Rucker has it, 35. Rucker to the 40. He has stood up and sat down at the 41. Fourth and about three. Right outs either side. Samford stacks the box. Widmeyer, pitch far corner. Rucker gets a block out front of the 50. Rucker out of bounds at the 45. Wingbone set this time. Fake of the dive. Hand off Robbie Davis right side. First down run to the 40, 35, 34. Robbie Davis working out at the halfback position due to several injuries. Has a carry for eight yards and a first down. Samford in a 4-3 defensive front. Shotgun snap. Widmeyer turns. Hands away to Romero. And he'll lower the boom at the 30, down to the 28. Two receivers, short side of the field. Tolliver back to pass, going to air it out to the near side. Man, open. Eight to the five. Touchdown, Bulldogs. 2.16 remaining in the third quarter. Sanford on the board. Wofford leads 28 to 7. Set up next to Whitmire out of the gun. Fakes the dive. Whitmire running to the near side. Now cuts it back to his right to the 20. Robbie Davis, the right half, comes in motion, now sets up again. Now he'll come in motion left. He'll get the toss on the corner. Gets a block from Rucker to the 25, walks the tightrope to the 30. Robbie Davis to the 40, first down out to the 42-yard line where he's run into the Samford bench. Fourth down and half a yard from the Samford, 47 and a half. Hand off Romero, left side, lowers his shoulder, has the first down to the 45 to the 44. Out of the gun, two tight ends lined up as wings to the right as they're stacked. Play action, Whitmire throws down the middle for Burson. He's got it at the 23, he's taken down at the 21. First and 10 Terriers at the Bulldog, 21 on the left hash. Hand off Romero, he fumbles the ball, and it is picked up by Samford at the 17 yard. Here's your first turnover of the day. Fourth and two from the Terrier, 37 left half. Quick drop to throw, far side with it, knocked away by Michael Johnson. Incomplete pass, the intended target was Lowry. Terriers get the ball on downs. First and ten from the 46 in their end of the field. Tolliver, play action, deep drop, under fire. He'll get his lights turned out, he's sacked at the 40-yard line. Mitch Clark with his second of the day. He never quit on it. He got blocked initially and kept coming, kept the motor turning and was able to bring him down on that second effort. First and 10 at the Bulldog, 43. Fake of the give to Romero. Whitmire cuts right and breaks into the open briefly to the 40, and then he is knocked over at the 35. Breitenstein, the lone back. Whitmire out of the gun. Hand off Breitenstein. Big hole up the middle to the 30, to the 25. He is dragged down from behind at the 21. 14 yards for Eric Breitenstein. On first and 15, deep drop for Tolliver, under fire, he'll be sacked back at the 8-yard line, it's Alex Goldtree, his second sack of the year, so now it's third and 11 from the 47, handoff Breitenstein up the middle, breaks a tackle to the 40, keeps his feet to the 35, bowls his way for the first down, down to the 34-yard line, that's some hard running, and we've got an official who wound up in the middle of that play. The umpire got stuck by Breitenstein, Broussard with the tackle. Terriers in a deep prevent umbrella. Tolliver going to throw underneath. Lowry with the catch. They lateral it to Johnson, and he is stuck by Michael Johnson, and there's your ball game. The Wofford Terriers are winners this afternoon here at Birmingham. They are now 8-2 and two overall, 6-1 and one in the SoCon. Your final score here from Siebert Stadium in Birmingham, Alabama. The Wofford College Terriers 28 and the Sanford University Bulldogs 7. Mark Hauser caught up with Coach Ayers after the game. Coach, I'd imagine time of possession was just huge, especially in the first half. Well, uh, a big part of our game plan was to try to keep the ball away from them. Uh, we felt they were very explosive offensively. They had the top rusher in the league. Uh, that guy has been running over everybody, and uh, quite frankly, we felt like that if we could keep it away from them, limit their touches, that that would give us a better opportunity to win the game. Uh, felt like in the ball game we played uh, really good football. The, the first half offensively, uh, we, we were lights out. And defensively, I, I thought we, uh, we, we came together today. I, I thought the kids fit the defense well. We pressured the quarterback well. Secondary, the guys were in place. They, they were making plays. They were knocking balls loose. They were tackling well. And, and it was just a fun game to watch. Uh, there, were, there were times, of course, during the game where we didn't quite do what we were supposed to. And, 
you know, the, uh, I guess the acid content in the stomach went up, but uh, it, it was um, it was a great win against a, a heck of a football team. Coach Sullivan's done a great job down here uh, bringing this program along. And uh, when you looked at the matchups, our defensive line probably average is probably 235. Their offensive line average probably 315. And uh, they, they were big physical kids, and our defense did a tremendous job of getting off a of block, pressuring the quarterback, and, um, and, and we stopped a great back. And so... Uh, we're happy. Uh, it's our eighth win of the season. It's, and, you know, we, when the season started as young as we were, didn't know if that would be in the picture. But uh, as camp uh, went on, we felt like that we had something special, maybe a, a, a special group of young kids. And uh, we, when you look at all the kids that, that played today, uh, our second team defense, two freshman corners, uh, three freshman defensive line and a freshman linebacker and uh, and and the kids just played hard. We we played hard and and, and they played well. We got one more left. Tough opponent, Furman. Uh, enough said. You talked uh, earlier in the week about your defensive backs just having to go out and make plays, not right. be as tentative. They right. made some plays on the ball right. today. Exactly. Uh, we we did some old school coaching uh, during the week and and we just basically tried to to get back to the fundamentals um, we, we were getting uh, really uh, tied up with route reading and things like that and and we tried to limit the route reading read the indicator and break on the football and I think it served us well today you got to meet on the hill at halftime yep. you yep. didn't bring him into the locker school. room it was old school uh, it's kind of like when I was in high school, you, you'd ride on a bus with all your equipment, and then at halftime, uh, you, you sat down beside the bus, and, uh, and you had your halftime talk. And uh, they have a bunch of stairs here, and quite frankly, it's like a Stairmaster test. And, and I didn't want our guys to take that Stairmaster test more than once. So uh, uh, we met, uh, did what we had to do, and then we went out and played the second half. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Coach Mike Ayers on this week's 28-7 Wofford win over Samford. Now let's hear from some of the players. We just executed. We came to play our game. We knew it was a big game. Another step to get to the playoffs, and we had to win. So we knew what we had to do. Offense stepped it up. O-line, quarterbacks, running backs, big game. Execution. Uh, we took this week very seriously. Uh, didn't know much about them going into it, but we executed, and they were big up front and got off blocks, made tackles, and got some good stops. Now let's take a look at the final game. Statistics, Walford with a pretty big advantage when it comes to first downs, 24 to 9, but a huge advantage when it comes to rushing yards. Walford, 349, Sanford just 56. Passing yards, pretty even. Walford, 119, Sanford, 130. A gigantic advantage for Walford in total yards as well, 468 to 186. And what about time of possession? Yeah, that pretty much tells the story. Walford had the football all afternoon. 44 minutes and 53 seconds compared to just 15.07 for Sanford. Penalties, 4 for 42 for Walford. Sanford, 6 for 53. Walford does turn the football over once, while Sanford does not turn the football over. But then again, they didn't have it very much. Appalachian State knocks off Elon in some other Southern Conference results. That locks in the Southern Conference Championship for the Mountaineers. Georgia Southern gets the best of Furman, 17-10. And the Citadel comes back to beat Chattanooga, 24-21. You're updated. Southern Conference standings. Appalachian State sits on top, a perfect 7-0, while Walford is 6-1. Elon, 6-2. Furman, 4-3. Georgia Southern, 4-4. Four four. On the bottom half, Sanford falls to 3-4. The Citadel, 2-6. Western Carolina, 1-6. Chattanooga, has yet to win a game in the Southern Conference. Now let's take a look at the White's Pine Street Exxon Play of the Week. It comes on the Terriers' first drive of the second half as Ben Widmeyer tosses his first touchdown pass of the game. Not to Andy Strickland, but to a wide-open Justice Joslin from 38 yards out to put an exclamation point on an impressive first 32 minutes of the game. And there is justice on that play, and it is our Play of the Week. Headquarters in Spartanburg, on a sea of manicured green space, Millican and Company places an emphasis on environmental stewardship and community involvement. One of the many reasons Fortune magazine ranked Millican one of the best companies to work for in America, and why Millican was named one of the safest companies in the U.S. Whether hosting community events or partnering with Warford on educational initiatives like the Summer Leadership Institute, 
the Milliken Warford connection is strong, and both are proud to call Spartanburg home. Dixie Tire and Automotive is more than a tire store. Since 1946, we've been in business to keep your vehicle in tip-top shape. Experienced technicians use the latest technology to repair and maintain your vehicle so it stays on the road. Oil changes, alignments, engine repairs. Dixie Tire and Automotive does it all. There's no car we can't repair and maintain, domestic or foreign. We're more than a tire store. If you need it fixed, come see us at Dixie Tire and Automotive, 1011 Asheville Highway, Sparkmark. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. This is where we take an inside look at some of the happenings off the field of play. This week we focus on the future of Terrier Athletic Facilities as we catch up with Walford Athletic Director Richard Johnson. Well, we're really excited about the Joe Taylor Center. Uh, when it opens this spring, it's going to house our um, coaches' offices for baseball, tennis, golf, some of our Olympic sports. Uh, very much needed space. It's going to have about a 7,300 square foot weight room that we desperately need. We need more space for our strength conditioning and that's going to be a great uh, asset to us. Conference room and uh, it's just going to give us a lot more space for our student athletes and are really going to be a big asset for strength and conditioning. We've had the need as you know strength training evolves. We outgrew the space in the Richardson Center. Uh, we went to more free weights, dropping them. We just needed more space. Uh, and so this triples the size of our, our old weight room. Uh, and it is all possible through a lead gift from Joe Taylor. Secretary of Commerce made a million dollar gift uh, that enabled us to get moving on this project. It gives us the opportunity to have state of the art weight room uh, to be competitive in the Southern Conference. You have to have that for recruiting. Uh, and then our coaches, uh, the technology in that building will give, be state of the art and enable us to, to move forward and compete at the highest levels. Now let's take a look at next week's opponent, brought to you by Blue Eagle Equipment. Next weekend, the Terriers will play their final game of the regular season when they play host to Furman. The Paladins are coming off a devastating 17-10 loss to Georgia Southern that in all likelihood eliminated them from playoff contention. As for recent history between the upstate schools, Walford won in Greenville a year ago, but Furman has won 10 of the last 13 meetings. This time around, the stakes are pretty high, especially for Walford when you consider the Terriers' postseason scenarios. And just like the way Georgia Southern spoiled Furman's chances this past weekend, you know Furman would love to do the same to Walford next weekend. Let's take a look at some of the particulars, and you can see kickoff is set for a high noon at Gibbs Stadium. Walford taking on Furman. It should be a great contest as two upstate schools battle it out for SoCon supremacy. And that's just good old-fashioned Wofford football. Dominate the game by dominating the game on the ground. Now, with an 8-2 and two record and a 6-1 and one mark in conference play, regardless of what happens next week, Wofford is locked into the second spot in the Southern Conference. So you think they got a pretty good shot at making the postseason, regardless of what happens next week, but... You like to win the football game against Furman to just simply take it out of everybody else's hands. If you beat Furman, Walford will be in the postseason. If the Terriers lose to Furman, they should be in the postseason, but there are no guarantees. We'll let you know next week. See you right back here then. Inside Walford Football, presented by Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, NBSC, 